story is about two great friends, a baby hippopotamus and a 130-year-old giant tortoise. This story is about an impossible relationship, one that by all the rules should never have happened. It's a tale of two creatures, youthful and ancient, who've come to depend on one another in extraordinary circumstances. The hippo wasn't always friends with the tortoise. He didn't start out as an orphan. And he wasn't always famous the world over. It's also the story of our relationship with animals, of how by looking into their eyes, we come to understand our own world. This is the story of a remarkable friendship. This is the true story of Owen and Mazai. Mombasa, Kenya's vibrant port city, has always been linked to Asia. A century after the last ships traded spices, ivory, and slaves, the sea would again bring something from the east. The largest earthquake in 40 years has devastated large parts of southern Asia. But the most deadly effect was from the tsunami, giant waves sweeping through the Bay of Bengal. A tsunami is a seismic sea wave, a rolling watery explosion caused by an earthquake on the ocean's floor. The water was stretching higher and higher. The awesome power of the waves in some places reaching half a mile inland. Tonight, more than 12,000 are reported dead with thousands missing, and officials say those numbers are bound to rise. The wave swept across the Indian Ocean. It would eventually take more than 280,000 lives. Half a world away, it surged against Africa's shores. A baby hippo was in the sea with his own family. Somehow, amid the swirling currents and clouded waters, his family vanished. We saw something strange in the sea. We just looked what it was, and it was a, a small hippo. There was a big crowd along the beach front, and as I was just trying to come out, the people were actually forming a wall. The hippos here in the water and in the water there is a lot of coral heads so it's not so easy to be uh, running around. We tried to catch it with the uh, fisherman's net. And we were talking oh, 20 people uh, holding this net and lifting with all their strength. They actually pulled it up basically to right where we we're standing and then they stopped and we said whoa they all stopped, and then suddenly the hippo, of course, uh, was able to get onto his legs again, and uh, just basically got up and started actually to run in this direction. There's one French volunteer who was actually very, very, very courageous. He just jumps on him like a rugged tackle, held the neck. And that man was called the Owen, and uh, actually the hippo was named after him.
this telephone call out of the blue, a friend of mine in Milindi, um, telling me that they had found a baby hippopotamus. Is there any way that I could take this hippo into Halla Park? Well, if a baby hippo needs help, then absolutely, we'll help it. So I got together a vet, Dr. Kashmiri. I got together Stephen Tue, who looks after the hippos, and drove up to Malindi to pick up this baby hippo. Initially, he just looked completely, you know, lacking of energy and anything. And then the blanket fell off his eyes. I think the whole experience for him must have been quite shocking, you know. He just lost his family. The next thing, he's been rugby tackled to the ground and caught and brought here. <laughs> You see, it's an unusual experience even for me uh, that we find a hippo, especially a very young one, out in the sea. And obviously it has been there for some time. I asked Sabine, where are we going to put this baby hippo? We can't put it with the other hippos. They might kill it. She said, well, don't worry, we have one enclosure which needs a little bit of work, but if you give me, you know, half a day, I can get the guys together and we can patch it up. And so that was the place, the Kaya. It happens to have two nice ponds in there. It's got a retaining wall, perfect for a small hippo. So we said, why not? And that's what we did. We brought him into Halla Park and it was already getting dark. It was actually really tragic. He was all trussed up in ropes. He was tied and he was quietly lying in the back of a truck. He looked exhausted. He didn't look very well at all. I was actually not convinced he would survive. Very slowly. I didn't go to the She can come for the For the bullet. For the bullet. Dr. Kashmiri and Stephen put Owen down and unwrapped him and Owen just simply ran away from us. I'm very glad that we didn't have to immobilize it or use tranquilizers on it as we let it go. It just walked away. Of course, you know, it's, the only stress is because it's a new environment and it's been in a net for some time. But I think it should be no problem. In two or three days, it will be settled. is really the result of 35 years of restoration of a limestone quarry here in Mombasa. And it started off with, you know, recreating a forest and then creating, you know, beautiful landscapes in a way to demonstrate how we can restore nature and how businesses can be responsible towards the environment and inspire people about nature and the environment. It was never intended to be anything like a zoo, but over the years, animals came here naturally and people began to bring animals that were injured or orphaned or needed help. Among those animals, a dozen giant Aldabran tortoises. There were other hippos, antelopes such as the eland, and the shy bushbuck, all living much as they do in the wild, sharing the forest, pairing with their own kind. Owen went into the only enclosure available. It was also home to a cantankerous old tortoise called Mize. The staff thought the hippo and tortoise would simply coexist and that humans would have to do the nurturing that young animals usually need. We imagined that we would be the ones to be feeding him and looking after him and what happened was completely the opposite. imagine a hippo would adopt a tortoise it just seems 
too extraordinary, too fantastic. To be honest with you, it's a bit of a surprise, and I must say, it's a kind of a pleasant surprise. By any measure, this was an extraordinary bond, one that defied conventional scientific wisdom. Hippos are mammals, giant creatures that love family company. They wallow in water through the day and move about at night. Males grow to over 8,000 pounds. Although they look friendly, they are very aggressive and extremely dangerous. But Aldabrin tortoises are living dinosaurs, ancient reptiles that scientists usually think of as cold-blooded creatures of instinct. They can live for more than 200 years. It's hard to imagine two animals more unalike, yet something drew the mismatched pair together. I reckon that Owen was lonely and he'd just been washed down the river and he'd lost his mum and he was scared and he needed some comfort and they looked really similar to something that he would regard as comfort, looked like his mum or something and just latched onto him immediately. Tortoises are almost the same colour like a hippo. The shape is somehow this roundish kind of shape. The combination is very odd, but it sometimes shows us how little we do know about certain behavior patterns of animals. Obviously, they have a much more intense sense of feeling and they have sense of caring and they have sense of tolerance. They must have had a very good perception and sense to see this animal was under stress and was looking for comfort. With no adult hippos to teach him the ways of the forest, the one-year-old Owen turned to Mizei for guidance. The 130-year-old tortoise had earned his name. Mizei means wise old man in Swahili. He showed the youngster how to survive, where to sleep, what food to eat. He didn't eat anything at first. He started following Mizei around and copying Mizei, and he still does that today. He will observe what Mizei eats and then eat the same thing. And this is probably what Hippos do in nature, they will copy what their mothers do and that's how they learn what they should be eating. They like to eat together, always is eating together. When they're resting, is resting together. The eating is to stay as a family. But the staff were surprised that Mazay too seemed so engaged in the relationship especially after his experiences years ago with another fully grown male hippo who one day decided to play with the old tortoise. In rolling Mose around like a ball, he actually cracked Mose's shell and they had to be separated. Mose is so distinguishable because of his cracks. None of the other tortoises have, have any kind of cracks on their shells, so he's oh, easy to identify. We've seen the damage that it can cause and, you know, we're a little nervous that when Owen gets bigger, he could potentially cause Mose a lot of damage. Like any child, Owen even began to mimic his adopted dad. But a relationship is nothing without communication. Before long, Mize figured out how to tell his big friend it was time to go for a swim. And pretty soon, Owen adopted the idea. He has started talking to Mazay, and we don't know who's learned from whom, but they seem to be making sounds to each other that sound very similar. Um, the noise where he's talking, he say it like an... Most of time. I think this is the language for the tortoise, but now Owen is trying to follow what Mazay said. He seems to have gained a lot from the relationship with Mazay. Most of it, I think, is related to protection and a sense of safety with Mazay. They've somehow come to a balance which seems to work between the two. It's quite